Rabbil Alamin Alhamdulillah Alladhi hadana lihada Wa ma kunna Linahtadi alawla An hadana Allah Alhamdulillah Nahmadahu Wa nasta'inuhu Wa nasta'ufiru Wa nu'minu bihi Wa natawakkalu alayhi Wa nasta'ansiruhu Wa nasta'hdi وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَى مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدِي وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيًّا مُرْشِدًا وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ لَهُ الْمُلْكِ وله الحمد يحيي ويميت ويميت ويحيي وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وقائدنا وإمامنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى رحمة للعالمين على فترة من الرسل وقلة من العلم فأدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصها الأمة فجزاه الله خير ما جزى نبيا عن أمته أوصيكم يا عباد الله وإياي بتقوى الله وتزودوا فإن خير زاد التقوى واتقون يا أولي الألباب يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول الله عز وجل ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب ويقول سبحانه وتعالى إنما المؤمنون إخوة إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم ويقول الله سبحانه وتعالى إن هذه أمتكم أمة واحدة وأنا ربكم فاعبدون أما بعد All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him and we glorify him on this blessed day of Jum'ah Today the first day of uh, Rabi Afani or Rabi Al-Akhir So the first half of the season of Rabi'ah is completed and now we are entering the second half of the season of Rabi'ah, the season of remembering the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of celebrating the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. Today I we want to share with you an important concept that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized and this is the relationship amongst us, among the believers, the Muslims and he exemplified a principle that made us strong as an ummah, 
based this relationship based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the relationship among the believers. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ Verily, the believers, the Muslims, are brothers, members of one brotherhood. We are one family. I we selected this topic for the khutbah today because of what is happening in our ummah. And you, you've all seen the news and uh, so much of what is happening in different parts of the ummah. And it is something that we should be concerned about. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in hadith, Man lam yahtam bi amri al-Muslimina falaysa minhu, o kamakal. That whoever is not concerned with the affairs of Muslims is not from them, it's not from among them. To show you how concerned he was about the fears of his ummah, this Muslim ummah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers as brothers and sisters, members of one family. Innama al mu'minuna ikhwatun. The believers are brothers. Then he describes this ummah. In هذه ummatukum ummatan wahida. Verily, this ummah is one ummah, one nation, one community of believers. This is how. We are from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in the hadith. This concept gives us strength. It strengthens us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we become kalbunyan al marsus like a strong cemented wall, a wall that's so strong when you have uh, blocks, building blocks, you put them together, you make a wall. That wall is much stronger than the individual strength of each block. Each block comes together and adds to the strength of the wall. Kalbunyan al-Marsus. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed the things that divide us even today. He did that 14 centuries ago. In the way he established relationships among the companions. It did not matter who they were, their tribe, their class, their ethnic origin, none of that. And among the Sahabas, were many different people. It wasn't one uniform collection of people. 
There are many different people. But the Prophet والسلام, in a revolutionary way, removed all of that. There were people before, in the days of Jahiliyyah, before Islam, that hold on to these narrow differences. And it caused division and friction and fitna among them. That feud would carry on for generations between different clans, among different tribes and so on. The Prophet Ali came and removed all of that. He established a different basis of relationship. You know, before it was uh, family connection. Tribal connection. Ethnic connection. Those type of loyalties. But the Prophet Ali established a basis of relationship that was different from that. The relationship was La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That is what connected one Muslim to another Muslim. And so the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam addressed these differences. You know, when, when the Muslims of Mecca made Hijra from Mecca to Medina, they arrived in Medina and they did not have much worldly possessions with them because the Quraysh in Mecca did not allow them to take their belongings with them to Medina. They went to Medina, arrived there, and they were in need. They have no home in Medina. They have no belongings. So they are in need. And the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, Akha bainal muhajirina wal ansar. He joined in brotherhood the muhajirin, the migrants from Mecca, and the ansar, the helpers in Medina. He joined a family from Mecca with a family in Medina. If there were individuals without a family, he joined an individual from Mecca with an individual in Medina. And the people of Medina, they shared whatever they had with the Muslims of, from Mecca that came. They shared whatever they had with them. Families divided their possessions in half and they gave it to that family that the Prophet joined them with from Mecca. Yes. It's an amazing achievement because what connected the Muslims was La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. It wasn't tribal loyalties nationality, and so on. And this is a, a principle that will give us strength to remove the relationships of Jahiliyyah and replace it with the connection of Islam. And the more you have in your heart the law for Allah and the law for the Prophet Sallallahu You will feel, feel this love towards your fellow Muslims. When you don't have this connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you hold on to other things. Nationality and race. 
and class and color and so on. And so today, as we look to our Muslim Ummah and see the suffering of Muslims in different places, and to see also how the enemies of Islam come together to plan and scheme against Muslims, then we ask ourselves, what should we do? And remember this principle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ How should you feel towards Muslims, other Muslims in different places? إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ Verily, the believers, the Muslims, are brothers and sisters, members of one family. This is how we should feel in our hearts. Islam came to remove people from the worship of other people and other things from submission to other people and other things. Remove that and replace it with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The great poet from the Indo-Pakistan subcontinent, Muhammad Iqbal, he said many great gems that are useful for us. Among the things he said, he said, it is your willingness to make one sajda that will free you from a thousand other sajdas. That one sajda is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will free you from a thousand other sajdas to your nafs to your ego, to your desire, to other people, to other things, and so on. Free you from all of that. Your sajda, your submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, revealed in the Quran. Kul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati Lillahi Rabbil Alameen La Sharika La Bithalika Umirtu Wa Ana Awalul Muslimin And I'm from among those who submit to this. Submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So put in your heart this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this love for the Prophet وسلم, and love for our Muslims, wherever they are. This connection of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, binds us in a powerful way. That no matter how far away we may be from other Muslims who are suffering, we share that suffering, we feel that pain. And the Prophet says that verily the believer in the relationship to another believer is like one body. Kaljasad. It's like one body. If any part of that body suffers an injury, the entire body feels the pain. Yeah. This is how we should feel in our heart. Have this care and concern and love for our fellow Muslims wherever they are. It doesn't matter how far they are away from us, in which country they are living, if they are suffering, then we should feel that pain. 
and realize our relationship with them, our duty toward them. And I always ask ourselves, what can we do and strive to do something for our Muslim brothers and sisters wherever they are suffering? Starting with dua. Starting with dua. Remember we say that this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about al-bunyan al-marsus. This strong form cemented wall. Which is made, of, made up of small bricks that's put there. Each brick by itself cannot be a wall. But putting them together, the wall becomes strong. See yourself as that small brick that can contribute towards the strength of that wall, towards the strength of the Muslim Ummah. Don't underestimate your dua. Don't underestimate your sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't underestimate your ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every little effort you make to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens this Muslim ummah. So strive to do that. In whatever way you can help, try to help. Helping a Muslim here gives strength to the Ummah. Don't underestimate your good deeds. Strive to do as much as you can do. Because sometimes, sometimes people feel helpless. You know, look at what's happening to the Muslims, how they are suffering, how they're being killed and so on. You feel helpless. You ask yourself, what can we do? No, you can do a lot. Rectify, strengthen your relationship with Allah. Strive to please Allah throughout your day in everything you do. And each act of goodness that you do will strengthen the Muslim Ummah. Yes, don't feel helpless. You can do much. And don't think that we are too small in numbers or too few. No. Strive and struggle for Allah and Allah is all powerful to do whatever He wants to do. Always remember that. And so today we remember our Ummah, our Muslim Ummah. And we make much dua for them. And we strive to do whatever we can do to help them. And we also express our thanks and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the goodness that He has blessed each and every one with. There's so much goodness that we all have. Always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ So that He will increase you with His goodness and His bounties. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our ummah and ease the suffering of our brothers and sisters who are suffering so much. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them victory over His enemies. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم آمين آمين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله أما بعد In Mecca there were divisions among the people 
based on race and ethnic origin, tribes and clan, and so on. The Quraysh was the main tribe and the highest level of the social ladder. And then you had different other tribes that occupied lower positions. It was so divided that there were slaves then in Mecca, and even among the slaves, there were different social strata. And the lowest level of the slaves was the Abyssinian slave. Those who were from Abyssinia, who were in Mecca, were slaves, and they occupied the lowest level of the social strata. One example is Sayyidina Bilal. He was from Abyssinia, a slave in Mecca. And because they were from that low social level, they were treated terribly. A slave is already treated in a bad way. But imagine among them now, the lowest level, they're treated even worse. Sayyidina Bilal began his journey in Islam as that slave. He accepted Islam in Mecca. And when his master, his slave owner, heard that he had accepted Islam, he persecuted him. On occasions, he would take, take him out in the hot sun of the desert and put hot burning rocks on his chest and tell him to renounce Islam. And he persevered. He would say, Ahadun Ahad. One Allah, la ilaha illallah, meaning persevered. Went through that suffering until Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq bought him at a heavy price or cost from his master and then freed him. So he became a free person, continuing his journey in Islam. He made Hijra to Medina. The Prophet Ali Salam one day called him. One morning called him to the Masjid, Masjid Nabawi, and he said, Ya Bilal, last night I heard your footsteps in Jannah. Last night I heard your footsteps in Jannah, meaning that you're going to Jannah. So he started off his journey in Islam as a slave, and before he left this dunya, the Prophet Ali is telling him, guaranteeing him Jannah. This is what Islam does for us. Sayyidina Bilal became the muaddin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he couldn't pronounce the Arabic well, especially the letter Sheen. He couldn't say Sheen properly. When he pronounced Sheen, it was sung like Seen. So when he's saying Ashhadu and La ilaha illallah, it sounds like Ashhadu and La ilaha illallah. So he's calling that van, and the Sahabas are hearing this. It seems as if he's mispronouncing the words of the Adhan, and they go to the Prophet وسلم, complaining that they can do a better job. The Prophet said, no. He will continue to be the Mu'addin, calling the Adhan. He became the outrunner for the Prophet وسلم, on their expeditions for jihad. Many are his great virtues. Look how Islam elevated his maqam. Another example also from the people of Abyssinia. They came to Medina, accepted Islam, and they loved the Prophet so much 
that the Prophet ﷺ appointed them to take care of the masjid, to be cleaners of the masjid. And they continued that for centuries. The Awad. And they have the special honor of cleaning the grave, the maqam of the Prophet ﷺ. And when they clean inside the inner chambers, they don't walk on it. They don't walk on the ground there with their feet. They're actually suspended from above and they're lowered down and they will clean the maqam out of respect and love for that place. And the Prophet ﷺ, that honor remained with them for centuries. From among the nobility of the Quraysh, Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, radiallahu anhu. One day he said something negative about Sayyidina Bilal, about his ethnic origin. And Sayyidina Bilal was hurt about this, offended. Didn't say anything. The Prophet heard. And the Prophet told Sayyidina Mudar, Innaka imri'un fika jahiliya. You still have the remnants of jahiliya in you to make that comment to Sayyidina Bilal. And Sayyidina Mudar was so affected by those words of the Prophet, he realized he made a mistake. And he said he put his head on the ground and he would not raise it until Sayyidina Bilal step on his head with his feet to make amends that this, these things should not divide us where we come from who we are, what we are should not divide us what connects us is more important than that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah that is how we should be as Muslims, yes, Prophet Ali says, we are like one body. If any part of our body suffers an injury, then the entire body feels the pain. So we should not be complacent or heedless about what is happening to our brothers and sisters in other places. The suffering is too much for them. You're hearing of entire families being slaughtered. Don't turn a blind eye. And today, our message is, don't feel you're helpless. No. Every act of goodness that you do to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will strengthen this ummah. So do it. Get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Devote our lives for Allah. Strive to worship Allah. Strive to do good deeds. Make our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the depths of the night. Cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let the tears flow from our hearts and flow from our eyes. As we make dua for our brothers and sisters that are suffering. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises us that he will answer dua and grant the believers victory. Yes, the victory is coming and it is near. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to see that victory. Amin, amin, amin. Yakul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi shayn al-habib. Bad a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidu majid. 
اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وثمان وعلي ولي أهل البيت أجمعين والصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وارخنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي الكربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأخم الصلاة إن صلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you. Thanks for coming. Uh, we kindly request you come, come on time every Friday for Juma and bring others with you, inshallah. And before you leave today, please visit the donation boxes to make a generous donation. And may Allah bless you for doing so. Ameen. 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 Allahu, Allahu, Allahu.